Hi, welcome back to our creative uh, video series. Today we're going to show you how to do a separate binding entirely by the machine. So we're going to start over here at the rotary cutter. Um, this is a project that I did in lockdown. So these were my orphan blocks. I had some embroidered blocks and some blocks that had flanges. They didn't really, weren't designed to go together. Uh, but we just put it together as a small wall hanging here. So I had extra fabric and batting around all four sides, but I just wanted to show you how to trim up your edge. So when we come in to do the trimming, now's the time if we need to do any squaring up, uh, it's very helpful to do it now. You can take your ruler and take one of the cross lines on your ruler and line that up with your straight side. And so then we can take and trim away the excess batting and backing. So what your quilt should look like is you should see on both front and back, you should see all three edges pretty even. Uh, we're going to be sewing a quarter of an inch, so if you have anything that is in a quarter of an inch uh, too far, so like if you look closely at this one, uh, when I was straightening up, I can see a little bit of an eighth of an inch of my batting. That's going to work out fine because we're going to be quarter inching here. If that was up to a quarter of an inch, then I probably wouldn't cover that. All right, so the quilt is now prepped. You're then going to take and you're going to measure your quilt. So we have basically 24 inches here on both sides. So that's 48 inches. And then I'm going to come across. So we've got another 12. So we've got 48 plus uh, two 12s, which is 24. So you do the math, guys. Basically, I know that I need two 45-inch strips. So two 45-inch strips, two across the salvages to make it around because one is not going to do it. So you can see here, and you can just lay your strips out. You don't have to do the measuring. With a little project, it's not so big, big of a deal, but if you're doing something larger. So you can see we've got enough strip here that will go all the way around and I've got about six inches of extra strip. And that's key to doing your binding. You need a little bit of uh, room to uh, start and stop your binding and you need uh, some uh, room to join your binding and also to make the miters on your corners. So six inches total uh, above and beyond the measurement of your quilt is plenty. All right, so let's go ahead and prep this binding. So we're going to head on over. I have my walking foot on the machine right now uh, because I usually use the walking foot when I'm putting my binding on. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and leave that on for doing my binding. But if you're prepping your binding one day and, and putting it on another, uh, you can prep the binding with your regular foot. So we're going to start out. You can see that I have a right and a wrong side for this particular one. This is actually a grunge, which I love because when you do grunge, you get a twofer. You've got a print side to your grunge and you have a solid side that matches exactly. But for today's purpose, I'm going to go for the print side as my right side. So I'm going to have the right side of one strip facing up and then I'm going to have the wrong side of the second strip facing down. So you can see that they're crisscrossing and you'll notice that I have my salvage edges. They are well uh, beyond, so we don't have salvage edges in the um, strip. And you really do want to have a little bit of extension. You don't ever want to line it up like this. Oftentimes I find I get kind of a wonky seam there. So by overlapping a little bit, even if you don't have the salvages, it makes it for a very clean, straight sew. Now, here's the thing that you want to do. You want to go ahead and grab a couple of pins. And that's kind of saying something for me because I usually use my uh, clips when I'm doing my binding. But when I'm putting the binding together, I want to come in and I want to pin it. So I want to come in and I want to pin my where I'm going to sew my line. So I just take two pins, nothing exotic here. 
and I can come in and then I can open it up and check it out and make sure that my strip is going to be straight. Here's the issue. Same two strips, same two positions, but if I pick it up and I sew across the opposite way, you'll find that you can't get the strip to open up. So easy peasy to grab two pins, pop them in the way you think it should be, and then check it out. Okay, if it's straight, yay, we're good, ready to go. Uh, if not, we just pull out two pins and we're not having to pull out stitching. So we're going to go ahead and get lined up and I'm going to sew from one notch to the other notch. So we'll take off, pull that pin out. And you notice I'm not drawing a line or anything like that. If, it's, if the line is a little wonky, it's not going to make any difference. The key to it what we are absolutely critical about doing is we want to start right here at the notch and we want to end right here at the notch. If you do that, even if your line is, you know, wavy a little bit, that kind of thing, when you open it up, those edges are going to be straight and that's exactly what we want. All right, you would continue to do this for as many strips as you need to put together. Then you're going to grab the scissors. So no worries about rotary cutting here. There's some things that we have to be really particular about and some things we don't. Okay, so we're just gonna come in and we're just gonna trim that approximately a quarter of an inch. Uh, and once again, didn't put a ruler to it. You notice it's not even perfect. Totally not a problem. We're now gonna head over to the ironing board and we're gonna press those open. So you would press that as many um, uh, seams as you've got. Now. Before you head over to the ironing board, so Pam doesn't have to keep running back and forth with the camera, <laughs> let's prep the end of our strip. So I like to have the pocket method of finishing my strip. I find it very easy and it's not a lot of math. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the wrong side of your strip. So you can see here's my pretty side. Okay, so that's facing down. You're looking at the wrong side of your strip and you're going to cut an angle that's roughly 45 degrees. Once again, no need to get the rotary ruler out and the rotary cutter, cutting with the scissors is fine. The goal here, what we want to pay attention to is we want the lower side of the angle on the left side. So that's how I remember it so I don't have to write it down each time. Left, lower. So the lower part of the angle is to the left when you're looking at the wrong side of the fabric. So we just cut that. If we cut it this way, we'll get a pocket, but the pocket will be hidden and we won't be able to use it. So lower left. And when we go to the ironing board, we're gonna press under about a healthy quarter of an inch there. So let's head over to the ironing board. And we will start out with pressing our seams. So we'll press that. We'll take care of our end. We'll press that. And then all of the strip is going to get pressed in half and you should be looking at the pretty side of the fabric. And let me get the iron out of here, but you can see how we created our pocket by having that, lit, that uh, lower part of the angle to the left. If we had had it to the right, the pocket would be hidden underneath the strip. Not helpful. So we're going to press this in half. This is the reason why I chose a really small project to bind for you guys because I didn't want you to have to sit and watch me press yards and yards and yards of binding. And we're fast. So we are now headed back over to the sewing machine. Yep, 
Now, if you're doing a wall hanging, just a little thing to think about before you put your binding on is you would probably want to hang this wall hanging, which is what I'm going to do. So what I've done is I've cut some squares. They're about four inches in square. And I'm going to press these in half. So you can stay where you're at, Pam. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't think that through. All right. And I cut these out of the same fabric as I did my backing. Now, big question of the day is what am I going to consider the top and the bottom? I'm going to consider that the bottom. So this is going to be the top. So if you're doing a wall hanging, rather than doing a rod pocket after the fact where you have to hand whip it on, we're going to take and we're going to put two little corners in the corner of our quilt. So I'm going to have a little pocket that I can put my little dowel rod in to hang up my um, wall hanging. So I always like to get that sewn on first. I try not to just pin those because you've got enough going on in the corner when you are doing the mitered corner for the binding that you don't need an extra two layers of fabric messing around. So we're going to go ahead and stitch this on. And all I'm doing is I'm stitching it at about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Because remember, we're going to come around at a quarter of an inch to put our binding on. So we know for a fact that the seam that I'm using to attach these is going to get covered in the binding. Now remember, if you're just doing a quilt, you don't need these. But it's just a fun way of getting it set up. How many times have we done a wall hanging and we get it completely done and then it sits in the pile for months because we need to get that uh, rod pocket on. You know, I'm all about the machine. I don't do a ton of handwork. So for me, it probably sits in the pile longer than it does for you guys. Um, but this is just a great way of, of making sure that you can hang it up on the wall as soon as you get it bound. All right, so there's our pocket. Okay, and what will happen is the rod will go into here and into here. I'll just cut the, the dowel rod about 12 inches and then I'll have a little hook that I can hook it on. Um, oftentimes I just use um, uh, command strips to attach the, the um, rod to the wall. All right, so that's all taken care of. So now let's actually get to the binding. So when we do the binding, we're gonna come in and the first step, we don't need to do any pinning or clipping at all. You wanna find the bottom of your project if you have the bottom. So I definitely do because I just put those triangles up there at the top. So now I'm going to go completely opposite to the, the triangles. If you have a quilt uh, that has a directionality to it, um, if you're doing, can you whip around and just show, a, show the caterpillar quilt? So you see the caterpillar quilt there. It definitely has a top and a bottom because if we flipped it the other way, the blood would go to their poor little heads. All right, so, so make sure if, it, if your quilt is directional, make sure that you're on the bottom of the quilt. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to take it. I'm going to fold my quilt in half, find approximately the center of the quilt. Once again, there is no getting out the ruler for this, okay? And we're going to line up, and with a walking foot, and with your stitch length, a little bit longer than normal as if you are quilting the quilt so my normal stitch length on this machine is two and a half we're going to go to three just to kind of compensate for the batting in the quilt and we're going to go ahead and we're going to start stitching and you'll notice i'm stitching all the way at the top of this pocket i'm not kind of down here i'm not leaving the end of the binding uh, loose and floppy i'm stitching all the way from the front and on this particular walking foot, there is an actual mark for the quarter inch. So Bernina walking feet will have that automatically. 
Um, a lot of more advanced walking feet, like Baby Lock makes a more advanced walking foot. Uh, it will have that mark on it. But here's my thing. If you are doing a lot of quilts and you're do, gonna do this technique where you're doing it by machine, if you have a regular old walking foot, put it to a ruler. So put the ruler at the quarter inch line right at the where the needle's gonna come down in the foot, measure over a quarter of an inch and grab a Sharpie marker and make that mark. So you would make the mark right here at the toe um, and literally I would come in, I would take my rotary ruler, I would just measure from the center of the foot, find the mark, and then go ahead and make a mark there. Because you're going around miles and miles and miles of uh, binding, and so it's so much easier if you have a mark to eyeball it with. All right, so we're cruising along and we're coming to a corner. So what I would like to do is about a quarter of an inch before I uh, come to the edge of my quilt, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna let my needle sink, and I'm gonna pick up my presser foot, and I'm gonna pivot the quilt 45 degrees, put my foot back down, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew right off the corner of my quilt. I'm gonna cut my thread, pick up my foot and so I have and it might be actually easier to see here on the front I've sewn here I stopped a quarter of an inch and I sewed out to the corner of the quilt now you're gonna take your quilt you're gonna pivot because I was gonna sew here right so we're gonna sew it flip it around this way we're gonna take it we're gonna put our binding all the way out and it will come to the point where I did those stitching. So you'll see that stitching when you pull it back. You see a little bit of that. You're going to pull it back and our goal is to have it perfectly straight along the edge here. And you're going to go ahead and do a little bit of finger pressing. Okay. If you need steam <gasps> on your fingers and there you go. But no need to go over to the ironing board. Just kidding about the steam guys. All right. So here we go. We're going to fold our binding forward. We're gonna line up the binding so that the fold is running right along the edge. And then I'm gonna come in at a, right at the quarter inch. I'm not starting in a quarter of an inch. I'm right at the edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew down to my next corner. So here we go. So you see, I'm just lining about six inches up. I'm sewing that six inches. I'm lining up the next. I'm taking my binding and just pulling it taut. I'm not letting it go all loosey goosey, nor am I doing the, you know, I'm pulling like crazy on it. I just want it to lay flat to my quilt. And here we go. Next corner, a quarter of an inch, needle sinks in, pick up the foot. Turn it 45 degrees, put the foot down, and sew off the end. Okay, on this corner, we've caught our little triangle piece in there already. All right, so we're gonna take it, we're gonna flip our binding away, we're gonna pull until we see our stitches, we're gonna finger press, and then we're gonna flip our binding forward. We got four corners, guys, so you're going to get to see this four times. Quarter inch seam. Quarter inch seam. And this is the reason why we did that diagonal binding. Do you see how when I pressed it, that, that seam went like this? So if we had sewn the, the bindings together, just butted them together, we would have a really heavy seam right here, almost like a lump going there. And we don't want, we want where that seam joined up, we wanna hide that as much as we can. So by doing that on that diagonal with the pins, definitely the way to go. And Murphy's Law says that, you know, usually this lands right at a corner. So you really don't want that extra bulk when you're doing your miter. All right, once again, pull up to the to the end, finger press that piece, 
flip it back down. Line up again and off we go down. I often find that um, beginning students are a little freaked out by binding and my only thing for that is it's usually the corner that freaks them out doing the, the uh, miter on the corner. Hey, no matter how big your quilt is, you only have four corners. So you f if you figure out a method, um, like doing it like this, and just keep going and doing exactly the same thing on all four corners, you'll be done putting on your binding in no time. All right, last corner. Okay, right, flip it away, find our stitching, press with our fingers, line up our fold, and take off and start stitching. All right, so we are almost back to the beginning. So now we have that extra bit of binding um, that we wanted to have to make sure that we can make it all the way around. There's nothing worse than getting to be about here and that's all the more binding you have. So we want to come in and we want to take care of this pocket. So I usually stitch until I get to about three inches before my pocket. We're going to take and we're going to tuck this binding inside the pocket. But obviously, I don't want to have to shove this amount of binding into the pocket. So what I do is I overlap it over and I'll fold it back just at like a 90 degree angle. So I'm coming out this way and the fold should be right at the bottom of the pocket. So if I stick my finger in here, the bottom of the pocket where we stitched it down, it should the fold should be just a little bit above that, maybe an eighth of an inch. You're then going to come in, grab your scissors, and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to cut that fold. Now we take a look at the fold and now we're checking to see if we're going to go in okay. So mine is a little bit long and I'll show you what happens when it's a little long. So when we shove that in there, okay. Do you see how when it's a little long, I create this little bubble back here? So we don't want that. So literally I'm just gonna come back in and I'm gonna trim about an eighth of an inch off of that. Always better to be a little long and trim a little off rather than cut it too short. And that is exactly what I want. It's laying perfectly flat, it's tucking into the pocket and we're not creating, creating any bubble. So we're gonna continue to quarter inch seam. So technically from the beginning of our pocket to here, when we went all the way around, we're actually double stitching this section here, which is the reason why you wanna really try and have that quarter inch seam so that you're stitching right on top. And ta-da, we now have our pocket binding taken care of. So you can see you flip it over. We don't have any raw edges that we have to do by hand or anything. So the next step that I do, this is the step that I don't see in videos. And it is the step that makes doing binding so much easier. Once you get it sewn on the back, go over to the ironing board and press this binding open. Uh, we want to have it, we're pushing it to the outside edge. We're not flipping the, the edge of the quilt. The edge of the quilt is staying perfectly flat, but we're just going to press that with a little bit of steam. When you get into the corner, just take the iron tip and just stick that into the corner. But most of the time I am doing the edge of the iron and I'm just kind of pushing it up against that seam allowance. What this does is it gives it a hard edge. It's not moving around on the back side, which is going to make our top stitching a thousand times easier.
All right, so now our binding is kind of stuck going that direction. All right, back to the, uh, the sewing machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to trim it. And we're going to flip that binding over. And what we're looking for, can we get close? Mm -hmm. We are looking, there's my seam that I sewed. So I was a quarter of an inch from the edge. We're going to take this binding and we're going to flip it around. And you know, I don't know that I did mentioned at the beginning of the video, I cut my strips at two and a quarter um, as opposed to two and a half. And so when you do that, when you roll it over, you're going to find that the edge of your quilt is going to be nice and snug inside the binding. You're not going to have a lot of flappy binding going here. Now, when you go to do this, you can take this and pin that with clips. Okay. I don't pin it with pins because the pins don't want to go in here. There's so much, they're so thick. And on a little project like this, totally not a problem. But if you're doing like a queen size quilt, if you're pinning all the way around, it becomes like a porcupine. It's, you know, you do not want to draw blood when you are doing binding. So the clips are perfect. And so I'm rolling this over and I'm just covering the stitching line. I don't want to pull it way past and I don't want to see it. Now, when you come to the corners, we would like to fold, I'm going to be sewing here and turning onto this side. So the side that you're going to turn onto is the side that you want to, uh, clip first. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to slide my finger out until I run out of binding and look what happens. Get my hands out of here. Can you see that? <clears throat> it makes that 45 degree angle. Woohoo. This is a good thing. And then we'll flip that on top and then we'll put a little clip there. So you can see how nice that corner is going to look. The reason for doing this side first, so the side that you're turning onto, because you could do it the other way, but if you do that, that piece of fabric is caught underneath. So when you're stitching down, it holds it in place. If this one's on top, it wants to, the walking foot wants to flip it up. And so you end up fighting for that corner bit. All right, so let's go ahead and stitch a little bit of this. We're going to start up here at the corner, so I'm not starting at my pocket, okay? I'm starting up at the corner. I would normally have this clipped all the way around. And I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And the clips, you can see, is super easy to do. And you can check. If you're not sure, you can... Check and see if you're close to that line of stitching because our goal here, if we flip it around, is we want to have the stitching on the binding, not on the back of the quilt. And if you take the time, that's where the payoff is for the quarter inch seam. If you get the quarter inch seam accurate, when you do the flip over, it'll just kind of fall into place. You don't have to work hard at all. So we'll work our way around. I'm going to stitch right to that diagonal line, sink my needle, pick up my foot, and then take off down the side. All right, so we'll cut our thread right there just so that we can show you this. All right, and so what we're looking for is we are looking to have a pretty top stitch on the top, but when we flip it around to the back, we're going to have that top stitching right along the binding and not on the back. And can you see how the pocket just wraps around here? So I don't even have to hand stitch that. I can do this entirely by machine. 
So we would go, we would continue around, come around, do our last little corner, do a little back tack at the end. And what I always tell my students is that don't judge your binding until you get it off the machine and head back to the iron one more time. Let's actually do that a little bit. So when you give that final press, look how crisp that is. Look how nice that looks. And it's done entirely by machine. I used to do my uh, bindings where I sewed them on the front and then hand whipped them on the back. And I am not a handwork person. And so my quilts would sit around for six months before I would get the binding done and actually get the quilt to the person that I was making it for. So this is a technique that looks professional. It looks nice. It doesn't look like we were trying to shortcut something, um, but it gets it, it gets it done. It's a binding. We want to have the quilt to the person not sitting in our pile. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you uh, got some ideas for, for this, and we will see you next time.